Welcome aboard. We're hauled out in Port Townsend for our semi-annual bottom job. Except, in this instance, we're applying a product that should last at least a decade. It's called Copper Coat. Now, don't let the name fool you. This is not copper bottom paint. It's actually an epoxy-based anti-fouling, similar to an epoxy barrier coat that simply rolls on like bottom paint. Copper Coat has been used and proven around the world for more than 22 years on over 40,000 boats. Boats that had Copper Coat applied in the 90s are being pulled 10 to 15 years later with no visible growth, even in the tropics. They're simply washed down and put back in the water. In the Pacific Northwest, we should easily see a similar lifespan of anti-fouling protection. That's because it's a non-leaching, non-ablative coating. In fact, copper is a natural biocide, and Copper Coat has received awards as the most environmentally friendly anti-fouling at international boat shows. Therefore, you can be assured it's completely safe. Beyond that, many boaters are reporting better speeds and fuel economy due to a continuously cleaner bottom, which actually means your carbon footprint is smaller. Copper Coat comes in three parts. Part A is a special non-gassing resin, Part B is the hardener, and Part C is the copper powder. And this is 99.6% pure atomized copper. Each pack is surprisingly heavy, so you can understand why ground is the typical shipping method. We received enough copper coat for our 46-foot Choi Lee trawler. The standard application requires four coats that must be applied by closely following the manufacturer's written directions. Jim Edwards of Copper Coat USA was on hand to ensure everything went according to plan, starting with proper preparation. The first step with our fiberglass hull was to remove the old anti-fouling. If your boat has an epoxy barrier coat, you would stop there. Since we don't, we took it all the way down to the gel coat. At that point, you can opt for an epoxy barrier coat, which is preferred and is something that is required for wood, metal, or ferro-cement boats. The next step is to abrade the hull with 80 to 120 grit sandpaper. Wipe the hull down, isopropyl alcohol works real well, ensuring there is no leftover dust. If you rinse with fresh water, make sure the hull fully dries out. Under no circumstances should you clean the hull with any oil-based products or solvents like acetone. Next, mix the product together. Since the mixed pot life of copper coat is dependent on temperature and humidity, never mix more product than can be applied within the time available. The recommendation is to mix one kit at a time. Diligently mix one part resin with one part hardener in an appropriately sized container. Once you have an even mix, carefully stir in one part copper powder. Stir thoroughly until you have achieved a fully homogeneous mix. Pour just enough copper coat into a roller pan for each applicator. Make sure you don't pour too much in each roller pan as the copper tends to settle. The product needs to be applied directly after mixing and do not attempt to apply copper coat by brush only use short pile 3 16 inch simulated mohair or foam sleeve rollers for epoxy. Each coat goes on fairly thin. The first coat might appear somewhat ununiform with the gel coat or barrier coat showing through in places underneath. Mix and apply the second coat once the first coat becomes tacky to the touch. A now more uniform appearance begins to take shape. The subsequent third and final fourth coat achieves a fully uniform covering with a reddish brown color. Now, if you're doing a DIY application and you have a friend or two helping, remember, you must apply all four coats in one day. If your boat's too big to accomplish this task, simply do one side of the boat at a time. One side one day, the other side the next. Since copper coat is a water-based epoxy, it takes longer to cure. Make sure no rain can fall on or run down the hull. But that also means cleanup is simply warm water, provided the epoxy has not yet cured. And that brings us to curing. Again, depending on temperature and humidity and following the written directions, 
we need a minimum of 48 hours, with at least 72 preferable. The more, the better. Okay, we're back. Three days have given the copper coat adequate time to cure, so we can now move the jack stands and coat the pad spots. We also coated the recently epoxied struts and rudders, again doing four coats in one day. And here we are, less than one week later, ready to splash the boat. We did the final step in the application process earlier in the day, which was to run over the entire bottom with 320 grit sandpaper to effectively expose the copper, which is held in suspension within the epoxy. As we said, properly applied copper coat should give us many, many years of anti-fouling protection. We won't worry about another bottom job for quite some time, which means we're already starting to save money. For our 46-foot boat, we're calculating a savings of approximately $1,000 to $1,500 every two years. Including periodic divers, over the next decade, we could realize a savings of close to $8,000 and that doesn't include any savings in fuel costs from having a cleaner, more slippery hull. And should we haul out for any reason over the next 10 years, we'll update this video so you can see just how well Copper Coat performs here in our Pacific Northwest waters. For more information, including testimonials and a downloadable application guide, visit coppercoatusa.com.